the Open Source Creative Podcast, episode 45, 45, <laughs> Blender NPR. This is the Open Source Creative Podcast, a podcast where I ramble on about creativity, process, and open source software. I'm Jason Van Gumster, and I'm not the only open source creative. In this episode, we have a few firsts for the podcast. It is my first ever interview. Yeah, 45 episodes in, and I can finally have an interview. It's amazing what happens when you're no longer recording while driving. All sorts of weird, crazy things open up. Because the other thing is that this is the first episode that's in video, which would be pretty obvious to you if you happen to be watching this on video. If you're just getting the audio version, you can go to the show notes for this episode, and there's a YouTube link and everything, and you can watch this if video is your thing. I'm testing it out just to see how it works, because one, I have a goofy face, but when we do interviews, it's nice to see someone else on there. Plus, I have some other ideas for some shows that are going to have visual components, so it'd be nice to share that with you. So that's that's the idea. We'll see. I also tend to bounce around a lot because I'm standing, so uh, we'll, again, I'm still trying to feel this out. We'll see how it all works out. In any case, the interview was recorded using Jitsi. It's a very cool open source video conferencing software. You should totally check it out. It's a, When you record, it's a little bit wonky with the way that it does um, automatic frame changing and those sorts of things, but by and large, I think it worked out fairly well. This right here is actually not being recorded with Jitsi. I'm recording this on my phone with a lavalier mic because, um, well, my webcam is very, very old. And if you're doing something through video conferencing, webcam is going to work out fairly, fairly well. I should probably still re replace it. But um, for like these intros and outros and stuff like that, I think it's better to have slightly, something slightly better quality. So I'm recording this on my phone. In any case, um, that's enough about the show, extra things around the show. What's the actual episode about? Well, I'm interviewing Lee Posey from the Blender NPR community, and they're, they're a fantastic and vibrant community doing really, really cool stuff, and they're actually in the middle of a crowdfunding campaign for developing, a, uh, developing something called Beer, which is a renderer specifically for Blender, specifically for non-photorealistic art and creating those sorts of things. And they're in the middle of working on it, and they're doing a really great job, and they actually have a really good plan for making it happen. But... There's a, enough of me talking about that. That's actually what the interview is for. So, let's get to it. Oh, we're going to toast marshmallows, are we? Could be. Okay, so my my microphone appears to be noisy. Well, I'll just have to deal with it. Uh, <laughs> no, so yeah, this is this is this is the beginning. I am doing the very first interview for the Open Source Creative Podcast, and uh, Lee Posey gets to be the guest for it. And you want to know who that is? So do I. And he's going to tell you. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'm just a lowly tenor. Um, not really. I, I came from the sheet metal union, uh, doing metal work and I've been doing that for like 15 years, about five to eight years ago. I got into Revit Autodesk stuff, you know, that whole mess. Um, I program for Revit and I, on the side do blender things. I uh, haven't been doing as much lately, but, uh, back in geez, 2010, 2012 is when we started really ramping up the NPR game and uh, created BlenderNPR.org. That would be, uh, you might know him on Facebook as SageLightBWK. I call him Bong. Um, and yeah, so him and I do the BlenderNPR.org thing. And now apparently I do interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Suckered into that. Yeah. Actually, for, for a second there, let's back up just a, just a, just a moment there because... It's an acronym. Not everybody knows. I mean, open source and whatnot is full of full of acronyms and whatnot. But specifically, NPR is non photorealistic rendering uh, or non photoreal rendering, depending on how you want to <laughs> put it. It's as long as it has the non and the photo and the yeah. rendering, we're good to go. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, and so th this is where where you can do th use three D and make stuff that looks like it was hand drawn, basically, or 
maybe it's kind of photoreal, but it's like maybe super hyper weird photoreal or surreal or whatever expression you want to get out of your head. Um, I think I think non photoreal is simply because there is photoreal rendering, but um, it does encapsulate essentially every other style. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Which, which makes a lot of sense. I always forget that because my brain immediately goes to, it could be like hand drawn, but yeah, the, the fact that you could do stuff like, um, I guess you'd consider stuff that what like, like poke studios, what he does. Love is, poke is, studios. He's kind of on that, that, that oh, yeah. NPR cusp. Definitely. Um, yeah, definitely. That, he's, he, he's literally, uh, in one of my, uh, I think he's got about 20 images in my, uh, windows desktop folder thingy <laughs> that swaps out every five minutes. It's great. So, with Blender NPR, you're are you actually so so Bong is is um sort of the 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 brains puppet, the brains and the <laughs> yeah. thing. um but you're like are you maintaining the website or or I know you've been doing the the um recordings and podcasts for the Patreon for it and and those sort of things that is correct so I'm the voice of the Patreon show the BNPR show that's my you know, BNPR show voice. Um, so I, <laughs> I know I do that. And then I am the, I guess the super backer, if you will, uh, I maintain and operate the website, uh, all the domain stuff. I make sure that it's operational and, you know, keeps on trucking to make sure it's available. Uh, doing, doing the, the, the infrastructure side of things. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Totally. So, um, now NPR, doesn't like it's not just just in the blender community but sort of especially in computer graphics in general npr sort of doesn't get um doesn't get the recognition at least i don't think it it, it deserves you know you don't you, you see really really cool stuff but it's not like someone says look at how npr that is yeah <laughs> no that's that's actually funny you mentioned that i was thinking about that the other day like so you see commercials you see t uh, you know tv shows cartoons um whatnot you see demo reels and sometimes they just throw it in there but it's like it doesn't seem like it's recognized as such and like what goes into that process isn't really i guess talked about very much well and it's in some ways i think it's a little bit like like vfx if it's done really well you never really know that it's there um like it took me a while like even watching older television like uh at this point it's older but like futurama was a great example yeah. of integrating hand-drawn and npr stuff and unless you're paying attention to it you don't really realize that like the environment is all cg yeah right i mean well if you want to be like yeah if we want to get really nitpicky we could say that uh what was it uh blade remember blade and there was like one scene in the entire show where it was cg <laughs> And right. it was like, there's something weird about this. It's supposed to be photoreal, but it's like, eh. yeah. and you're like, eh. so no, no, uh, the intention was photoreal, but no, uh, NPR, when you see it, uh, it, it, like you say, it does not get the, the, the pop, like, wow, that's what is the, what is the metric? There's no metric. Right. There's, there's, that's, that's there's so... photoreal. And then there's obviously that's... not, but what degree of not photoreal is it? There isn't. Right. A, yeah. Well, so it is tough to quantify. Well, and I think part of the issue there is that it's it's well, maybe it's a mindset thing too because you see something awesome like like from Poke Studio and you're like so that that's fantastic stuff and you don't classify that necessarily and think about it in that regard but if you think about something that is you know recreating sort of a cartoony look or an anime sort of look um, you are it's it's an effort and emulation right and so the recognition for I've you get a lot of recognition for emulating reality. You don't necessarily get a lot of recognition for emulating unreality, uh, which it's a little unfortunate. Oh, hold on. I think your, your audio just blinked out. Unmute. Ah, hey, wait. there we go. Oh, well that was awkward. So, <laughs> so my talking like this. Okay. So what about pixel art? Um, that's yeah. a big one. Pic pixel art's kind of making that comeback you know we got like like minecraft type things we've got what i mean there's a bunch of different things like that and that one people just look at it, it it's like oh it's it's pixelated and like right. no but there's like there's like some real beauty in it like if you know what you're doing and it's actually hard oh it, yeah. It's not, yeah it's not easy to nail it you know so. it is it's true um but 
we're trying to, or at least you're trying very hard. You and Bong are trying very hard as well. There's actually a whole like, especially for Blender, there's a Blender NPR community. They have a, a corner of Blender dot community that has that, and there's the Blender NPR org website. Yeah. Um, so you guys are actually blender blender has a lot of good things in it already for npr right so there's i mean i'm going to say freestyle and i like freestyle and people are just yeah but yeah. freestyle's <laughs> freestyle's awesome if you, if you can sort of wrap your brain around it oh, yeah. um the the various ways of like just just abusing the hell out of out of all of the uh especially with EV, but just abusing the, the, the shaders and the, the shader RGB node and doing that kind of stuff is just it's psychotic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's, there's a lot of really, really cool things in there, but Blender also doesn't have necessarily everything that a, an NPR artist needs, right? Yeah, I think what, it's, what it comes down to is it, 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 de it doesn't cater specifically to, right? Um, I, I just explained a little bit in, in the Patreon episode uh, recently. It's like... Um, if, if Blender is going to maintain some sort of industry standard, and I use that term loosely, industry guideline, mm -hmm. right, if you will, um, you can't cater to every single situation. So um, if the industry is kind of geared towards photorealism, you wouldn't necessarily like change your whole course to cater to none, right? I mean, so it, it kind of makes some sense. However, um, it's not to say that you can't, like you said, you can, you can definitely do photorealist or non-photorealistic stuff in render, in Blender, wow. Uh, but it's it's not as easy as it could be. It's not as efficient as it could be. Um, nodes, uh, you can get messy really fast with them. Um, they're not, I mean, they're usable, but are they user friendly for the task, right? Mm. Um, so, so there's some hurdles, I would say, to getting to quality or expressive. I, I, I hate, no, there's not hurdles to getting to quality. It's the efficiency thing, right? And right. sometimes when you've got to get an idea out, some of the beauty of non-photorealistic rendering is the simplicity and the speed at which you can get to that, you know, that object or that that way of expression. You want to get to it quickly. So being controversial, isn't Grease right. Pencil enough? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Um, I mean, what about resource? Well, another another fun thing about that is like, what about resources? Like system resources, you know, um, if 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 you could. Uh, if you could limit yourself to a Raspberry Pi, could you do great photorealistic work on a Raspberry Pi? It'd take mm. a while. <laughs> Maybe you should make you. Yeah, you might want a cluster. I mean, whatever. But uh, so you could, you could. But there's hurdles to it. And then so if you were limited by resources, um, with that in mind, if you're limited by resources and wanted to do some non-photo photoreal rendering, um, you could certainly do that within the means of your resources a little easier. Okay. Um, so you mentioned Patreon. Yeah. What, what Patreon is. So what does, what does Blender NPR need a Patreon account for? <laughs> so, yeah. So we just started doing the, uh, the Patreon as a helper to fund the, the beer add on or the beer render or whatever you want to call it. I, I guess I, I don't have it straight in my head. Um, what does beer stand for? We should talk about that real quick. Yeah, that, that's because be worth... I just I just said it realizing, you know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like we're, we're funding beer for Blender yeah, NPR. Mm. It's just beer money, you know. Yeah. No. <laughs> so so beer is Blender Extended Expressive Rendering. Um, so or did I get that backwards? Extended Expressive. How about Blender Extended Expressive Rendering? Okay, so it, I mean, this was like back in 2012, I believe. Yeah, this project's been around for a stretch, hasn't it? Yeah, I actually made some of the original graphics for fun on on Twitter, <laughs> like <laughs> like like a little funny cat character holding an actual beer just to be funny. Um, I, I just thought it was amusing that we could get away with using that um, as an acronym, and it actually fit, you know, what we're trying to do. Right. Um, so um, we 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 started the Patreon to kind of help. I guess uh, raise awareness and then also, you know, a, a, as, as little as we get from it, we don't, you know, it's not like we're making bank here. All of that money mostly goes to the development of beer. And we've been kind of collecting for a while, uh, lots of donations from all around um, the world. Uh, people have purchased products from blendernpr.org and we have just been holding this money until we could find somebody to actually do the work. 
and so now you actually beyond the Patreon, you have a the 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 beer campaign. Is that is that is that the actual? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's the beer the, development campaign. The yeah, you beer development beer. campaign. Yep, nope, yep, that's correct. Uh, so we did start the beer development campaign just recently, um, and and we're starting. So we're going to start that in kind of like two steps, right? Um, the the first thing is to create a back end. You've got to have the engine, right? And we decided to call that malt. <laughs> uh, I love cute names. It's, I, it's... <laughs> yeah, why, why not? So we have malt. Malt is being developed by Miguel Pozo. He's our, our main developer. Um, and so once we get, you know, he's actually into it a week right now as of this recording. Uh, so he's got instances working he's got some of the stuff to get um the geometry out of blender so he's he's already got some things working it's pretty cool uh but you know that's kind of boring back end stuff but it's totally necessary right i mean we have to start with this he's he's building us basically the awesome foundation we're going to need so you're so he you you and by you i mean blender npr as as, yeah. as an organization as a community yeah. are building a a new renderer for blender that caters to NPR and malt is the sort of the, the back end to that. So if, 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 if the, if cycles had a name for whatever it does under the hood, this is yeah. what malt is. Yeah. That, that'd be it. Yep. You got okay. it. Okay. Um, because cycle, neither cycles, nor if you, is it, is it the actual renderer that's insufficient or is it like feeding that data into it? Because it sounds to me like there's also like a, a, a different, like, interaction model for dealing yeah. with shaders and, and those sorts of things completely um so yeah it's a it's a it's a fundamental difference um so it's kind of a layered approach and each of those layers are um they're how do i put it the layers approach makes it to where let's see you could code each layer individually um and so it's i guess translating to the front end makes it easier too um because it doesn't have to worry about other layers to figure this layer out or that layer out if you will um that's kind of hard to talk about because it's super technical and it's on the fly right this part <laughs> well no but the, the yeah. so it, it's Let's it's see. also kind of distinctly not blendery Right, because Blender doesn't has never had like a stack in term like aside from yes. like the modifier stack, Blender right. doesn't really have a layery a visual layer system. Right, the the layering system, the collections are 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 an organizational group. Uh, layers right. in pre two point eight were also organizational groups. Groups are organizational groups, um, but something where you actually have things that are stacked upon each other, um, and and that kind of like literal sense you yeah. we, blenders never had that right so so do you code because you know we could totally use it. <laughs> you you obviously understand it yeah no that's awesome i i have i have i have written code and i have written very bad patches <laughs> and yeah. i have written add-ons that are funny yeah um, right <laughs> but i would i would i would not necessarily i so my methodology is implement it poorly so that somebody who actually knows what they're doing can actually implement it well I love that um, idea. This is this is the the way that that my life has been ruled. Uh, yeah, it, it's <laughs> like think, you just got to get the discussion started. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, the reason why Blender has um, the QTRLE encoding capability, I was working on a project that needed to be able to render to. This was, yeah, it's like twelve years ago. I was working on a project I needed to be able to render to a video file with an alpha channel, um, <laughs> because. The, my editor needed the alpha channel, but she was only editing in Final Cut, and Final Cut doesn't support at that point, and probably still doesn't support um, image sequences. And so it needed a video file. And the only at the time, the only video codec that actually supported an alpha channel, QuickTime Animation Codec QTRLE, Gosh. and FFmpeg supports it. And Blender uses FFmpeg, but that oh, wasn't exposed go. within Blender. Huh. So I wrote a really, really crappy patch. And I submitted that. <laughs> it's, it's basically submitting a patch as a feature request. Basically, <laughs> I, I wrote a really crappy patch, submitted it to the bug, bug tracker, and nice. Sergey looked at it and like basically threw all of my code out and implemented something that actually worked well. <laughs> I love and, it. Um, <laughs> the feature features there, and it still works, and it's being maintained, so I can't complain. <laughs> 
Nice. But yeah, so to answer that's a long way of answering your question. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a hack in terms of yeah, fighting software. So yeah, but no, you're correct. It's a stack. It's a layer stack, um, and it's it's flexible. So like uh, each each shader graph is like what you define it to be. Um, okay. Yeah. And so, from an artist standpoint, how do you how do you how do you feed in those those layers from? Because the, my my worry with a system like that is that all right, so I know Blender, and granted, Blender has changed dramatically oh, yeah. in the last year or so. Yeah. But I still I still know Blender. I still have my brain wrapped away around the way Blender works. How do how do you sort of deal with the user interface and user experience in such a way that you get that kind of feature, but it still feels Blendery? Yeah, and that's going to be the fun part, I guess, with the UI. You know, once we get this, um, the malt, you know, done, once the malt has brewed, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't stop. Um, yeah. So, like, once that's, like, you know, getting to the point where it's um, usable, then we can start um, looking into UI stuff. I would hope that we would keep it in, in you know, back when I, when I was blendering a lot. Um, I really enjoyed the modifier stack, to be honest with you. Um, so, if it was something, you know, I'm not saying the same as or copy of. I'm saying something similar in that same um, in that same vein. Um, I mean, maybe something also like uh, GIMP, Krita, or otherwise. I mean, Krita especially has a sweet layering system because you can qualify the layers as vector layers or things like that, right? Right. Um, so what if you had like you know I'm I'm going to throw in a grease pencil layer. I'm going to throw in a blank layer. Um, and it's a like a layered system, but each layer is is um, a shader of whatever three D objects you're doing. Da 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 da. Will beer? So beer's. Got, I mean, malt's got the back end part of this, and it, it's it's sort of the the kernel, if you will, for for that that rendering engine. Mm -hmm. But we're not. You're not like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You'll still be able to. How like you can still use things like. EV or freestyle with that? Yeah, no, this is going to be, um, it's going to be a render add on as I guess freestyle would be a good example. It's, it's actually its own renderer, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it does its own thing. It just simply inserts that into the, to the um, blender image there on the render output. Um, so I would imagine that you could use an EV layer in beer. I'm cool. questioning that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay. So it's, I mean, that's, that obviously also feels like, I think that's, that's partially the, the user interaction model, but it's probably also um, anticipating that interaction model is you have to make sure that the, the, the underpinnings support that. Um, right. Because there's, there's stuff like um, LA, LA and PR. Lamp yeah. Lamper. Lampier. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to get that. I mean, that's, that's an exciting NPR related thing. And I'd hate to not be able to take advantage of that while using Dude, beer. Totally. Right. No, I think that our, our approach is inclusive, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so we want to be able to include whatever. Okay. It's, yeah. I, I would not qualify us as exclusive at all. I would like to, I would like <laughs> to think that we are trying to make sure that it's, it's a, it's a freedom, right? It's an expression. It's right. an expressive renderer. So expressive to me, you would think would mean anything goes. Okay. Cool. Now the campaign just started as of this recording, it started what two ish weeks ago? Beginning yes. of June? Yeah. The middle of June? Yeah. Oh, uh, beginning. Yeah. Beginning of yeah. And you're the campaign's to raise twenty thousand US dollars to pay for the development of malt. Like, am I getting that right? Let me think about that for a second. I think that we already have um, some of that, almost half. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at the website now. It says yeah. 8,400 8, of the required yes. 20,000. Yes. So, yeah, that's what we're trying to do. That's what the campaign is to. We were hoping that, you know, with somebody as awesome as Miguel coding this this first part of it, that we could get. So, you know, cause that's, that's the cart and the horse thing, right? It's like, well, I don't want to back a thing that doesn't actually have like some momentum. Right. So we've been slow growing the fund for, like you say, I mean, we started in 2012 and we, I mean, what we made like some videos and some things, gosh, I made the freestyle tutorial. Like, right. Wow. That that's old. <laughs> um, yeah. That might have to get some love. Um, but like, you know, 
we've been slow growing this fund until we could find the right time, the right person. Um, and everything just kind of, you know, doors were opened, right? So now it's like, okay, so we've got this much money for the primer. How do we get the rest? And so that was where um, Bong came up the, with the idea. Um, it's like, hey, well, we, I said, well, can we just like have people just donate on Gumroad or something? Like, how do we do this? I don't want to like give nothing for, don I don't, you know, it's right. tough. And it's like, but uh, his idea was, okay, well, we could sell blend files. And so we've been looking to the community to, to donate blend files, like cool projects, like uh, right that, that really encapsulate NPR stuff. They're super NPR. <laughs> 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 Quantitatively speaking, they're extremely <laughs> NPR. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're really cool. Um, and so people have donated those uh, as, as like our, gift of appreciation for a donation, I guess. Um, it's a pretty cool idea. And so our hope is to, you know, get to the point where the momentum is built, keep giving out cool blend files. If, you know, if people want to support via just the store, that's great too. Um, you know, mo uh, over over half of the money goes to the, the beer campaign anyways. So it's like, we just use the other part for operating costs. Just, I mean, what a website and, you know, little things like that. So. Yeah, we're now, just trying to keep it going. So, I mean, you're doing a fundraising campaign. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, I guess one, some folks' obvious question is why not use another platform like LibrePay or um, Kickstarter or Indiegogo or, or one of the ones that are built around that whole campaign thing? Why, why do the Gumroad way? Uh, well, those ones actually take more off of the top than Gumroad. Mm. The from from what I understand, I mean, um, I think GoFundMe takes quite a bit, not, not quite a bit, like, you know, but I think relatively speaking, um, and just selling blend files just seem to work. Okay, no, I mean, makes sense. Yeah, and so if, our, if, if there is a NPR artist that wants to sort of they have they want to have a blend file they want to donate, is it just go through the Blender NPR dot org? Uh, website. maybe we need to put a banner up for that, but, uh, we, I think <laughs> I, I know that we, uh, long put a link in our, in our Patreon, um, post. So I know that there are, there is a link to a form and there's a link to a form. Uh, it might be the same form, uh, that you can talk about if you can code or if you can do anything else, like you want to do, um, bug hunting or anything like that. Um, GLSL shaders, if you can do that kind of stuff, Ooh. um, right yeah so um it's it is the same form so we can keep track of kind of everybody's contribution to the thing right on so super cool um all right that well that answers that like because i was curious because I, I was looking at it, i was like it's 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 a gum road thing and yeah. you would expect for the camp so going with with so this is this is like step one campaign how many like on a roadmap wise, how many, how many campaigns do you think it's going to take to have this thing done? I think what we're hoping to do is kind of a continuous campaign. Um, if, if we can keep going while the development, so like we have a roadmap of, um, you know, how many weeks it's approximately going to take. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we were hoping to do was to be able to keep uh, funding the, the development um, and hopefully keep the donations keeping it going if that makes sense so it's like once our seed money gets to the dry spot we will have um gained enough to keep the development going past that point okay that makes it well that because that, that sort of dovetails into my next question of mm -hmm. okay so because i like the approach first of all of having a developer already sort of picked out and planned because i i run right click select that Com or the right click select section of, of the Blender community. And um, <laughs> one of the things you see, you know, people will, will make these requests out into the void, but they have, and they're surprised that they don't get implemented because they don't, they don't, they haven't spoken with any developers. They haven't mm. tracked down a developer to see if there's any interest in actually coding it. They haven't done a lot of that legwork to get this feature that they really want badly in. And right. you guys have, which is exciting because it's the right way, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand as a, I mean, I guess since I'm an Autodesk programmer, um, part time, uh, oh. I, well, not, not for Autodesk, mind you, <laughs> uh, for a mechanical contractor. 
Mm -hmm. And so I get, I get people that will come to me and say, Hey, it'd be really cool if you made this thing that did this thing. And I'm like, it would be really cool. And I could do that in, you know, a small amount of code, but it wouldn't benefit like this whole group that I am also coding for. And so maybe I could implement it into something later down the road because basically the cost of my implementation time is more than it's worth for the for the return of investment that I'm going to get from it. You know, if you are one person using this code for, you know, two things every week versus I'm coding something for 50 people that use it each five or 10 times a week, guess what I'm going to code first from from the manager standpoint. Uh, so with that said, yeah, sometimes those features in even with a lot of traction, sometimes features just aren't implemented because you know, the, and, and I know we're not a business, but the blender return of investment might just not be there for it. The, well, the, it's, the whole buy-in. Well, yeah. And it's the, 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 I mean, blender's gotten a lot more developers like the Blender foundation. Has, there's been a lot more development energy behind blender um, with the development fund and everything going behind it. But Every, even every developer has their own interests. Every developer has their own list of, it's not, it's not like they don't know what's wrong with Blender. <laughs> they have their own like special list of things that, that they find wrong. I've been, so I've been very patiently waiting for, um, so, uh, Delay Flinto. He, he wrote the, he maintains a lot of the, he, he had written and I think still maintains like a lot of the stereo, the panoramic so, stuff and panoramic and stereo, oh, yeah. but I really, I really want to have stereo support for textures so that you Ooh. can have parallax within a texture, wow. um, which might be useful for, for NPR, That's, by the way. Hey, feature request for beer um, yeah. is parallax yeah. texture support. Okay. Got yeah. it. So the, 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 the challenge on that one, however, is that basically I'm the only user of that. And so with him also handling a lot of like the, the, development management stuff now is like he'll find time when he finds time but i've been i've been waiting patiently so if delay you're listening i'm still waiting uh <laughs> also hi delay because it's been a while <laughs> <laughs> um but so this uh, this goes back to what i was saying earlier though is like the other cool part about trying to go with the continuous model is that the other question beyond not having developer to begin with is all right so what's your plan for maintenance Right, you don't want to make basically write the feature, build the code, throw it out into the wild, and then say, "All right, I'm out." Right, you want to be able right. to have some sort of plan to maintain it and keep it going, because otherwise, it's just going to die in the vine. Um, if we look at our history for um, Blender NPR.org, we have a reasonable, um, you know, m not you know, a reasonable monthly portion that we could probably throw at that, um, just with what we do. So cool. I think that maintaining it, you know, for I don't know how many hours it would take a month, you know, eight to 16, maybe, I don't know, you know, right. uh, maybe it's, or, or maybe it's something that we get a version one out and then we go, wow, there's a lot of use here. We may just need to do another, you know, wait a year and do another campaign, you know, right. a, you know, hard campaign, like let's do this guys. And maybe then we do a, a formal GoFundMe Kickstarter or otherwise, because um, sometimes those are, sometimes it does merit something like that with a formal uh, fundraising campaign, because if you already have a, a reasonable product, people are just so much more willing to back it. Right. right? You know, so you, you develop another roadmap or say, Hey, we got this done with this. Imagine what we could do with that. And right. we say, you know, let's, let's double or triple our budget and get another developer on board. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. Right. And get the, get the ball rolling. And it's like, okay, now we've got a, a very solid thing for people to back. So, it, it, I mean, again, if the renderer is about expression, why not treat the campaign or the, or the mentality of how we're going to get it as the same thing? Like, if people want, if enough people want this expression, it's going to happen. Right. So, so that, so that, because I still have other questions on the, uh, like how, how beers is, is planned. Like we, you don't want to, it's not going to be exclusionary, but it's still kind of a renderer. Now the renderers that are cycles is, is an add on, but like, mm -hmm. it's kind of an add on in name only, right? There, there's right. a lot of like specific API hooks in it that, that it takes advantage of that. Like, for instance, I know for a long time, um, oh, I just lost the other, the ray trace renderer. That's really awesome. Um, Octane. No, no, the open, <laughs> the, open, the, the open source one. Um, oh, gosh starts with an L has an L in it. 
Lamb. It's gone. Uh, I, I lost it. <laughs> um it's actually used a lot for product visualization and they use it a lot for um uh product visualization and archviz where because it's the one that actually gives you really good light caustics uh caustic effects on on uh light when hmm. like because cycles can do caustics but they're very expensive oh uh, gotcha and it takes forever to render out so this hmm. this is a different renderer that is not really great for animation, but it's really great for very accurate lighting and stills. It's a long, and I'm, I'm going to write down right now, remember what that thing is and put it in the show notes. <laughs> well, I guess uh, while you're thinking about that, there is something to think about is that beer being as flexible as it, as it is, you could build a photo real render engine on it. Okay. I mean, there's nothing saying you couldn't do that. Well, so what I, what I was, I was kind of getting at though, is like, so it, there's two parts sort of to the question. One being if it's, if it's an add on, um, do you think Python is necessarily going to be sort of a bottleneck for performance? Cause you, you were talking about being able to do gotcha. this sort of thing on a raspberry, raspberry Pi four. You I know, wish. <laughs> what kind of, what kind of like that interface glue is still, you're still going to be going through Python unless you're talking through C. So what is right? How's that planned out? And if it's, if it's going through C, do you have to have your own distribution of Blender or get it back upstream? How is that sort of working? That is definitely a fun question that I will have to deflect on because <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe um, I'm, I'm hoping that just for anybody listening and watching, because we're in video. Um, yeah. um, so Bong couldn't be part of this interview because inter internet connections are, are what they are. And yeah. um, so what we're going to do is hopefully the next episode, he'll be able to fill in some of the blanks on these questions that either I don't know out of ignorance and Lee just doesn't have the answer for. Uh, <laughs> also because uh, of ignorance. <laughs> uh, well, there we go. Um, so we'll, 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 we'll admit that in the next episode, the brains will be here and explain everything to us. Yes. Um, not that we're not that we're putting any pressure on them at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that that so that was the one part of that is that the the integration in, in that part with with Blender because the other half of that is okay. So cycles is technically it's an add on, but it's also a standalone renderer. Right. So do you expect that beer could be used by other three D animation from? Tools? So from what I understand, currently um, it's being written for Blender specifically. Um, uh, because I think we were, I was just reading something about one of the things uh, that Miguel just did, and it was like getting instances to work mm. with this. So I, I mean, that sounds very Blender specific to me. Um, right. So, so at current, I would say it's for Blender. It's a Blender add-on only, um, but not to say. I guess that's another question we should ask for later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I just I can imagine like Cycles was originally built for Blender and right. had really really deep hooks into it, but now mm. it's, it's being integrated into um, what was, you can use it in Cinema 4D, you can use it mm. in Rhino, you can use it in a wow. handful of other things. So there, it's it's being used as a standalone as well for some of these other projects. And so I was just curious, like that, if that's sort of in envisioned for for where that could go. Yeah, I don't think specifically, but let's see. So yeah, Python and OpenGL based render engine. Okay. Well, and the the other the other reason that sort of prompt the question is that I noticed that it's going to be released under an MIT license, which right. would allow for that kind of, for the same kind of integration that Apache Apache that um that Cycles enjoys with these other closed source programs. Correct. Yeah. No. That's that is one thing that's kind of cool about it. Very cool. Um, so I can right. actually talk a bit about, um, like what are, what are like first few tasks are like right now yeah, we're doing, do. let's do, let's, so like right now we're at syncing blender objects and syncing textures. And we, uh, like I said, we just did, uh, sync instances. Um, the next stuff, I think we even have normals if I'm not mistaken, like working. So oh. that's a good thing. Uh, and then the next one, let's see, you know, on the list, uh, is uniform editing. And then for, I think that's what he will be working on soon. And then the render library will be after all that. Then the okay. render library is, I'm, I'm trying to kind of go by what I know will be covered in the next couple weeks. So like the base render library, then targets, 
drawing the scene, da, 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 da. And that, I do believe those are all um, blender specific items at this point. Cool. And so yeah. you've raised the 84, you're looking to get the 20. Do you know by when you, you would like to have that 20? Uh, so I don't have my math in front of me. I'm trying to think we had basically enough to do a specific amount of time. And we were hoping that within that amount of time, we would be able to, you, like I said, perpetuate the, um, the development. So right. if, if maybe we need to take a couple weeks off here or there, um, that's, you know, that's okay. I'm sure. So, so would you, would you prefer that people donate to the campaign or is, is Patreon the sort of going on that sort of subscription model better for you? I mean, if you're definitely wanting the, the progression, I'd say that the donation to the campaign is probably the most efficient because it's going to go right to, um, the, the development because, you know, Patreon also takes a little bit out. Um, so the, you know, buying blend files is probably the best way to do it at this point. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited by this. So you guys have a, I'm, 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 I'm super stoked by it actually. Cause yeah. um, not just for the stuff that I'll be able to play with it. Cause yeah. I'm selfish like that, but <laughs> right. um, just seeing more stuff that people, people produce with it. And um, just if for anybody, again, check out the blender NPR dot org website and that's non-photo realistic rendering not national public radio because that's right weird. Um, <laughs> check, check because like you guys have the 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 blender npr podcast and you have regular postings of people's artwork in, oh yeah tons of artwork yeah i mean let's see let's let's go to i'm gonna go to posts right now and think about this because i mean we have posts if you just start scrolling like crazy uh you can just keep scrolling down more and more and more and more and more. And it goes all the way back to like my taco man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Which was using blender and some layered crazy stuff to make, you know, just a, a taco moving his arm. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it ought to be. Right. A little dancing taco man. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, but so, by by contributing and the the other advantage of contributing to the campaign is that you do get these these really awesome blend files which are released under a creative commons license right yes yeah we actually we oopsed and we put out one that was a fan art we had to actually remove it um so that was a good call by somebody on twitter that saw it and we were like oh crap whoops <laughs> so yeah we changed that up and uh yeah very cool well cool i think this this is the time where I ask you: Is there anything that that I haven't covered that you would you want to talk about? Could be could be Blender and PR related. Could be like you know what you ate for lunch. I, I, I'm interested. Ooh, what did I have for lunch? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not important. Uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's warm and nice outside here. I don't know how it is on the East Coast. Um, this is my this is my workplace. I've been working here since March. Nice. So that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> not not having a commute. How about that? Do you 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 don't have a commute either anymore, right? I I, I I commute once a weekish at the moment. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. No, I I have not commuted since March ish. It's been oh, nice. Very yeah. cool. So remote work. All right. <laughs> cool. All right. So I I I actually I, I noticed that other podcasts when they do interviews they have like their boilerplate questions. So I I have at least. Oh, good. I have at least one. Maybe uncan, two. uncan the questions. Yes, I'll, I will uncan the canned questions, and that one. <laughs> so, I mean, you, what's your so? I guess this is the easiest one. What's your favorite open source creative tool? Ooh, man, that's a tough one. Um, actually, I have a I I have a couple. So, I mean, I like Blender. Uh, my my problem is that with my job, I haven't been able to utilize Blender for, you know, as much as I'd like to. I do love Krita. Um, mm. My kids are getting into it. I I, uh, I found another, well, let's see. I got I got them into Krita because they like to make comments, comics. Mm. And um, then I've been dabbling in pixel art editors. Uh, and oh my gosh, there's some really cool, super badass pixel art editors out there. Yeah? Um, yeah, Pixelrama with uh, Pixel... Pixelorama. So pixel O Rama. Oh, 
always cool to find more. Yeah, I mean, it's just totally fun. It's on GitHub. Um, I do believe it's it's fully free and open source. You can you can download it. Um, that's a fun one. Yeah, yeah. I it it supports uh, different color palettes, all kinds of fun things. My kids are using it like crazy. Um, they love it. Yeah. This this will so this, that I keep doing this. This will be the part of the show where I find more things to distract myself with. Great. Right. Yeah. Totally rabbit <laughs> hole. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I'm using right now. Um, I just launched. Uh, no, no self promotion. I won't tell you the name, but I did launch oh, sure. a, uh, a consulting business. I already have clients, fun things like that for uh, for kind of the stuff I do with um, with Autodesk stuff. Um, mm. But I found because of it, I found Open Project, which is how I'm going to do my my project management for myself, for oh, my client, yeah. for my clients, and my billing and everything like that. Open Project is a super de duper powerful project management system. It's like uh, it does the the functionality of Trello and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, it's not just Trello. I mean, it's like everything. Right, right. Yeah, actually, I looked in Open Project for a while there. For of course, I that's it hadn't been developed to the point that it is now, and so I I ended up using Redmine for a long while. Yeah. So this that. this yeah this do totally does Redmine, uh, Basecamp, Rike, Asana, Jira, Team, Gantt, all that fun stuff. It kind of does like all the things. It's pretty darn amazing. Um, you can do your own uh, uh, Docker installation if you have that functionality capability or otherwise, or you can you know pay them to host your cloud essentially. Um, it's pretty rad. Right on. Actually, one other one other project that's you may be interested in looking at. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it integrates well with Open Project, but it's open source. Invoice Ninja. Ooh, 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 ooh. yeah, I like it. Well, Open Project has has such good templating. Oh that yeah. You can. Um, yeah, you you basically fill out your tasks, and as long as you put time to those tasks, it essentially automatically does your time generation for the week. Oh, that's, it's, that's cool. Yeah, so I'm kind of sticking to that, but but I'm going to look at this invoice ninja. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the name the name alone kind of makes you want to look at it. Pretty sure I'm going to look at that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Cool. Well, so the last little last little question of canned canned goodness without it being spam can not spam not, yeah <laughs> not spam not spam can no, the other way around uh, <laughs> where can people find you what's 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 the best place to track you down as well as the the, the blender npr project um i mean blender npr.org you can contact me if you really needed to um i don't really do facebook i don't really do twitter anymore i got a linkedin so there's that it works for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I was able to get in touch with you this way, so it's good enough, right? Yeah, it was totally rad. <laughs> well, actually, technically, you got doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we we were in contact. That's the it interview. happened. Yeah, it happened, and this interview hopefully is actually all being recorded. Oh yeah. By the way, for for anybody who who is curious, I'm doing this on Jitsi, so it's all still open source. Um, I'll probably be hosting the video part of this on YouTube, but still hosting the audio part the way I normally do. Um, with a intro and outro and all that sort of stuff. But um, I think that about does it. So thanks. Thanks for, for being the, the first interviewee for the open source oh creative gosh. podcast. I didn't even know it was the first. I'm excited. Yeah. I've done what 40. I'm, I'm actually embarrassed. I can't remember how many episodes I've done. Uh, let's look really quickly. <laughs> Yeah, this is actually episode 45. So I've done nice. 44, 44 episodes, and this is the very first interview. So Nice. Appreciate yeah. It. No, no. Thanks for thanks for coming on. And actually, I, it's, it's important stuff, too, because, again, NPR doesn't get enough goodness. Um, yeah. And, and Blender... Like they're 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 little pockets. You'll see Blender and PR stuff get 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 mentioned and shown off, and people will point at it and stuff. So it's yeah, it's uh, super exciting. So cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and that's the show. Big thank you to Lee for being the test rat or guinea pig or lab puppy. Anyway, he he was. <laughs> Thank you, Lee, for, for being the very first interviewee, hopefully of many other interviewees on the show uh, and taking part in all the first of it and, and those sort of things. It was great having having you on as a guest and I'm looking forward to doing more of this. And the folks at Blender NPR, 
that project is phenomenal. And if you haven't checked it out yet, go to blendernpr.org and really take a look at what they're doing. The, the artwork there is phenomenal. The uh, plan they have for their development campaign is great. Um, it's, it's something that I think actually will work. And they've been working on it for a while and, and the passion's still there. So I think it's, I think it's super cool what they're doing. Um, so definitely check that out. But of course, you may have noticed in the episode, there were a few questions that uh, I didn't know the answer to, obviously, and Lee didn't have all the answers to. So Bong, the brains of the Blender NPR effort, uh, he's going to be recording some, uh, some answers to sort of fill in the gaps on, on some of those questions that we had. And I'll be sharing that next episode um so that we have some stuff to talk about there um but that'll be super cool so be sure to pay attention to that coming up it'll be posted next week in the meantime i'd love to hear what you think about this show and interviews in general and using video and everything the best way to do that of course is to do it by email just send it to podcast at opensourcecreative.org uh, of course, you can also, if you feel like it, track me down on your favorite or not so favorite social media site. Just look for Monster Java Guns for me or OSS Creative specifically for the podcast. I Either one of them you can find me to me that way. Of course, this show also has an email newsletter. Um, you just have to go to opensourcecreative.org and click on the contact button and uh, fill in the form and you'll be on yonder list of newslettery goodness for the podcast and uh that'll be pretty cool but that's enough of that thanks again for sticking around i really appreciate that all right now it's time to get to work stop the recording and then i'll cut out the part where i said now i'm going to stop the recording and have awkward silence <laughs> exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how exactly do i stop the recording i don't know it just flashed blue at me though that was weird stop recording <laughs>